All right, so why Ram Das matters. So that's what this video is about. Um, I did a video about why Eckhart Tolle matters, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago. And um, the reason I did it on Eckhart Tolle was because Eckhart Tolle was one of the first teachers to um, explain to me what was happening to me uh, about my awakening. I didn't know what was really going on. And uh, after, I don't know, six months or so, or give or take, I, I was in a bookstore and I um, actually heard a couple of people talking about the power of now and uh, earlier. And then finally I uh, was at a bookstore and just walking down a, a um, aisle and I turned just instinctively, intuitively, and the power of now was right in front of me. So that's interesting so i said oh well, i gotta take it and then i started reading it and i'm like oh yeah i wow this i get it i understand what's going on and then he uh he in introduced me to the idea that for the first time that you don't need to believe your thoughts and also about the pain body uh which was vital and really helped me in helping me heal over the years over the many years this was i don't know 17 years ago or so so uh, this is my second one of why this spiritual teachers matter. I don't, I guess this might be a series. I don't know. But so Ram Das, so Ram Das. So yeah, you know what? I, I heard about Ram Das, uh, you know, 17, 15 years ago while, while I was really started getting into my, uh, into spiritual teachers and I I think I thumbed through Be Here Now and, you know, I thought it was kind of cool and and saw some of his videos. But for some reason, I just stayed with Eckhart Tolle and a couple other teachers, whatnot. Flash, flash forward to, I don't know, about three years ago or so. And um, I uh, moved back to Chicago and uh, ended a relationship, moved back to Chicago and um, started diving back into spirituality. And um, Ram Das just came up. So I started, I started listening to his YouTube videos and thank you for posting them on YouTube, the, the uh, Be Here Now people. Um, and uh, it just, he, 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 his teachings just really resonated with me. So it, it helped me deepen and uh, my uh, awakening, even after 15 years or so, whatever, and uh, just helped me grow more and become more insightful and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, so I just wanted to, from my heart, this, this is an impromptu thing, so I'm just gonna speak from my heart. And, um, but Ram Das, and what a, what a wild story, right? Going from, so I'm taking off my, cause I just wanna show you how, so after I started getting into Ram Das, and then I saw uh, um, Midnight Gospel, okay? Midnight Gospel by, uh, uh, Duncan Trussell and and the last one or one of the last episodes with his mom is really heartbreaking but a great um, oh I should do actually I'm gonna do a uh, episode on that just episode by itself cool um, I'm gonna do a YouTube video just on that one but um, after that one and after I was listening to Ram Dass for a while uh, I was so touched by that episode, and especially the surprise. I'm, uh, well, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! But the uh, last part of the episode, he gets on a bus, and uh, um, Duncan Trussell character does, and uh, oh, I got a little dog next to me, <laughs> gonna move away, and uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Hi, doggy. Uh, so 
the end of the episode, he had a, uh, um, he, he saw Ron Doss on the bus and Ram Doss said, he said, am I dead? And he says, uh, be here now. Ram Doss says his famous be here now. And his book, Be Here Now, came out in, I think the early seventies, was very uh, instrumental in bringing um, Eastern philosophy, Eastern spirituality to the uh, United States and Western. So I did this, so this is my first and only tattoo. Yes, if you could see that, be here now with the, um, I think it's called the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail, symbolizing death and rebirth, death and rebirth, e e eternal life, so. So yes, because of that, see how how interesting the life uh, influences us, right? Just out, out of the blue, I I always thought, man, maybe I'll get a tattoo, and then and then uh, after watching that episode and um, listening to Ram Dass, oh, I'm, I I remember walking by a tattoo parlor. And I said, oh, I'll just go and see how much it cost, and. Uh, so and I said, okay, I'll pay, I'll, pay, I'll pay for that. What do you want? Oh, I want that snake thing that eats its tail. I didn't even know what it was called. And then I want in the center of it, be here now. And interesting enough, the, the woman who was, uh, who gave me the tattoo and we talked about it, it was so funny. She, she was like, oh, this is a crazy sign. I just told this, per, this girlfriend of mine to, to read the book be here now and uh she just she actually saw that midnight gospel too when it came out earlier and we talked all about it and we actually watched it they had tvs there uh so we watched it while i was getting tatted so <laughs> so ramdas matters yeah so thank you so so i guess one one part of this post is just having gratitude and thank you to all the spiritual teachers out there for helping us to the Buddha and Jesus and Rumi and uh, you know all the gr great masters Lao Tzu of the, the Tao um, the Zen people you see I uh, Zen patriarch I don't I don't know I, I'm, I don't know too many of them but you know everything with the Christian mystics all the way down the line, it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing, right? Because the, 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 that sharing has been instrumental in a lot of our awakening and spiritual development, okay? And also the people, the, the more modern teachers who, um, like Eckhart Tolle and uh, Adi Shante is, is one of my uh, favorite ones. Um, from, from Muji, so um, all these teachers, and and now there's a lot of younger teachers out there. So you know, we, we, you know, we we stand on the shoulders. Everyone who's sharing um, their spiritual insights are standing on the shoulders of the, all these people. Yet, ever, all these teachers have their own unique. Um, lens that a flavor uh gifts to uh share uh this spirituality and ram das has his his own unique um character right character so uh so it's so interesting because he started out as a harvard professor and um you know psychology um, and he um, bumped into Timothy Leary there and they started doing psychedelics. Uh, Timothy Leary started the whole uh, psychedelic movie mo movement uh, with Ram Das. And it, um, Ram Das felt like he was, it, this wasn't it. Like he got all the, and he would talk about it. So Ram Das basically sharing his story uh, his sort of her hero's journey because he went on a spiritual hero's journey. Um, and the way he does it is just uh, fascinating and, uh, um, 
and, and tremendously helpful to everyone who listens. Um, and we got, uh, and, and life goes on. Life is going on. We got a train in the background. Um, but the bell, 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 you hear the bell. So the, the, so we all, people on the spiritual path, we all have that bell sort of in us of ringing like, hey, you, 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 you're not supposed to be stuck in ego consciousness. You're supposed to awaken, you know, we, and, that, and that drives us all on the spiritual path. Um, and um, same thing for Ram Das. So he he had spiritual awakenings under the influence of psychedelics. Uh, but then after a while, going through that stage, he realized that he kept coming down, that it wasn't sustainable. Um, and in some in some regard, I would I would sort of argue that. It wasn't, uh, it was true, but it wasn't true, you know, true, deep, on a deep level. Uh, because it, it, it was sort of induced, right? And that could be helpful for a lot of people, t tremendously helpful for a lot of people. And, uh, and psychedelics can be very helpful for uh, healing addictions and healing um, emotional stuff and... and so, uh, and I've done ayahuasca, uh, three times and, uh, it's been powerful, uh, experiences too. Also opening insights and, and stuff like that. So he, so Ram Das got, he was like, oh, you know, I, I, there's has to be something more. So then he went out to, um, India, right? And, uh, sort of not knowing, but just, just found himself in India. I think he was supposed to go to Japan too, but, um, and then he found somebody who, uh, in Nepal or something like that, who he knew got it. He knew that this person got it. This He knew that this person um, had an awakening, knew what, what was up. <laughs> So he went on this journey with this younger guy uh, and who followed him around India for for a few months or so, I don't, I don't you know, a couple months or so. And, um, and as he tells it, uh, Ram Das just, you know, sort of kept asking him, you know, kind of getting frustrated, like, okay, where are we going? And uh, I have no idea what's going on. And probably, you know, getting uh, kind of like a kid in the backseat of the car. Like, are we there yet? You know, or where are we going? Are, you know, and um, Ram Das re relates the story and saying, you know, where, what's going, where are we going? And kind of complaining and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the, the guy um, says, be here now, be here now. Just be here now, just be here now. So, and that, that in it, in it, and of itself is a uh, nugget spiritual teaching that we all can um, appreciate and all can use. And um, if there's and if there's seekers out there watching this right now, you could just be here now. I mean, you could just talk. You know, you could shut this video off and just be here now. Just see what happens. Just be here now. See, there's a little construction going on. A little siren deep in the background. You know, radio going on. See, just be, be here now. People walking around, people with their dogs. Sun, sun is setting. Birds. There's plane, planes landing at O'Hare Airport. A dog barking. So you just be here now. This is it. This and this is magical. If you could see, if you could open your eyes up to it, this is magical and beautiful. 
So anyway, so Ram Dass um, followed this man to uh, his guru, this man's guru, and um, and Ram Dass, I guess, studied or was into Buddhism, and this was a Hindu uh, guru, and he didn't really want any part of it, and um, the, the guru asked him some questions, and the guru guru kind of knew things uh, the guru's name neem karola Bobby, baba uh or they used they call him Ma maharaji um which is a called king or it's a it's a it's a term for spiritual masters in india um so the the maharaji knew knew things about Ram Das and knew about his mother and his mother's death and um, that that Ram Das was talking was thinking about it the night before two nights before whatever and Ram Das just knew that he the 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 um, and Ram Das wasn't like very very skeptical of this um, guru and kind of you know tight and as he tells it um and uh like he doesn't want to he doesn't want to uh the other gu the other man um bow down and to and kiss the the guru's feet right so he would never do that right he would never do that so um, so you don't, you, I, and I just want to say this, you don't, when you go on, this is why it's very hard for a lot of people to go on spiritual practice, you know, because there's, there, there's, there's, there's stuff like that. There's, 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 you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. Ram Das obviously had no clue that going to India, that this was going to happen, right? And just before it, just deciding to go to India. So you don't know, you don't know, but you have to, you have to, um, you have to truly give up, give up. You have to give up everything. I came at a time where there's a lot of dog walkers coming out. <laughs> trying to navigate my way around. See the, see the world of form. Um, yeah, so so you, do, you don't know. You don't know, so you have to be willing to, and I'm not saying you need to drop everything and leave your family or anything, nothing like that, nothing like that. And as Ram Dass would say, use your family as, the, as your spiritual growth, your curriculum. But what I am saying is be open to the possibilities that that life will take you or, or reveal to you things and situations um, that is going to help you grow in, in this consciousness. I'll use Eckhart Tolle's life will give you what you need for your consciousness to grow. Right. So that that's what happened to Ram Dass. So, um, Ram Dass, uh, knew, knew that Maharaji kind of knew, knew his thoughts and Ra Maharaji had this, um, this unconditional love, uh, emanation from, from his presence. Right. And, uh, and the other people could feel that too. Other people who talked about Maharaji. So this unconditional love. So, so it's sort of like all these forces combined of like knowing. And, and, and Ram Dass said the, um, his, his name is Richard Alpert before he became Ram Dass. And, and Ram Dass, he, he knew all his thoughts, knew, you know, it's like, you know, everybody knows. It's like they knew all, because we all have crazy, you know, shitty, uh, 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 ugly thoughts in us right uh, the the human ego right and uh so maharaj maharaji knew all of that 
and everything about him, Ram Das, but had unconditional love for him. So, and that's what Source is. Source is unconditional love, right? It, and that's why Jesus says anybody can awaken the saints and sinners. You know, people, that's why he hung out with the prostitutes and the thieves and stuff like that because, because every, anyone can awaken no matter what your karmic baggage is, right? So, um, so, so that, that sort of like perfect storm of knowing unconditional love, knowing about your mom, you know, just the, being rigid too and, and feeling the presence of his unconditional love. And Ram Dass just like crump, crumpled down and started crying. So he had this a major opening. So he, he let go. I mean, that's my interpretation. He just let go and surrender and said, I, I'm, you know, I'm giving up. I'm giving up this ego, this ego. And, and when you give up this ego, and this happened to me before, uh, many times in, in the beginning, after my awakening, um, where I would just start crying. And it was just like, because I was just so happy that I, it was freedom. I was crying for the freedom that I never felt before. And it's this peace that pass, passes understanding that, that you feel. And it's like, oh my God, and you just start crying. And it's, it's, it's good tears, good crying, very cathartic. Because you're home, you're finally home. You're, you're... So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna give a whole uh, a biography, don't worry. Um, so that so he had this awakening and and he you know stayed there and learned you know learned a lot grew and blah 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 and then he came back to America uh, wrote be be here now um, and uh, started teaching okay started spreading the word right um, and he also I'm just I just think the evolution of Ram Das as a teacher is interesting too because he he started out you know wearing all the costume of a of a guru of an Indian guru with the robe and sandals and stuff like that the beads and everything and late in the maybe the late 70s or in, in the 80s definitely he started just dressing like a regular person um, so he, he grew as a teacher and, um, and what I just love about him is that also his, uh, well, he devoted his life to be, a t to share, to share and to share and to help others awaken sort of like a bodhisattva. And, um, and, uh, I think that's, that's, uh, that's, I mean, thank you. Thank you, Ram Dass, for doing that. Um, and I think it's hard for a lot of people to devote to sharing the Dharma, sharing truth. Um, but, um, but he devoted himself to it. And, um, yeah, so, so he just, he started a following and and he he just kept growing and and they they would audio record and then videotape his uh, sat songs and um but he he always had this vulnerability to him right and you know but just being honest you know being honest right like those dogs like <laughs> like I, you know, I, I, I got angry or, you know, I, I had this, he liked to use the word mashugana, right? Because he, he was, uh, he was Jewish. So he liked to use the, I think it's Yiddish, you know, I think it means like crazy energy or why, you know, stupidness, <laughs> my mashugana. And we all have mash mashugana, right? Everything, our, our, our lust, greed, sloth, 
our, our animal instincts, right? Right? Our Meshugana. So, he, and he was honest about it, right? And, um, and really appreciate that. Uh, you know, I really appreciate that. Um, because there are some spiritual teachers out there who, who seem uh, distant, right? Who seem like uh, they're um, they it, it, not as relatable, I guess. And that's okay. I mean, not every teacher needs to be relatable, okay? And also, two, two relatable teachers can be also uh, have, a, have a dark side too. Uh, uh, and, um, you know, because it's like, oh, I, I only need relatable people. And, and, uh, and I think also for some of those teachers, that could be a, uh, uh, it could be a trap too. Cause it's like, oh, I'm not going to grow or heal any pain bodies because I need to be relatable. You know, if, 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 you know, so, so it, it could be a two way street, right? But anyways, but he was authentic. He was authentic. He was authentic and um, and relatable. <laughs> and uh, and very smart, very smart, very intelligent. And he he could talk about not like me obviously <laughs> not like me but he and he could talk about spiritual topics uh pretty clearly and concisely and sort of you know weave them in and out uh you know so uh, 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 it, 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 in in his uh talks and and also you know so th that not like me i do not have that talent i just i just so, and, and also he was funny. He was funny as hell. He was funny as hell. And, uh, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to let the, the dogs go. He was funny as hell. Uh, and I really appreciate that because this, this spirituality it's there's a lot of humor in it i i know there's a lot of seriousness in it and that's true i mean there's there's periods where you need to be serious okay um but but having a sense of humor about it all and yourself is key is key and i definitely wasn't i i it took me a little while even after my awakening to, to start having a sense of humor about myself uh I like to think it came a little more naturally um, just because I wasn't taking life as seriously anymore. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so those are some things. So Ram Dass continued teaching and, and also he, you know, he didn't, he didn't really make too much money off of it. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, so, you know, that's how dedicated he was. Um, he didn't really want to make too much money. Not like, not like, uh, what, uh, not like I would. I would probably be like, hey, I, show me some money. But he, uh, he didn't do, do too much money, you know, make too much money off of it. Um, and he had fun. Um, I'm just trying to think. So yeah, so, and, oh, and his, you know, his dad, so he had issues with his dad, his dad. I mean, God, just imagine the father, so proud of his Harvard professor son, you know, coming back in a row from India. <laughs> the father would call him rum dum or something like that. So he had, so he had, so, so he had issues dealing with his his family and so that's just just to, to point out that we all have issues and things in this world of form that we have to uh, address or face 
it's part of our curriculum. He, he started using that term. Um, and uh, and uh, he got into, he, 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 I'm looking at some political signs here uh, that are, there's a mayor's race coming up. So he actually got into social, um, social issues. Um, he got into politics, or at least he, he, he um, so, the, so those are things that we all have to navigate. Um, I'm, I think he told a story where he and, uh, was hanging out with Alan Watts, having some drinks or something like that. And Alan Watts said, you know what the problem you have, Ram Das, is that you're too in love, enamored with the absolute. And Ram Das agreed. He agreed. That's, that's, that's so amazing. Ding, ding, ding. He agreed. There's a train going by. He agreed. So he, he realized that he was, wasn't in, in, he was hanging out in the absolute and not in basically I would call it not integrated, not working on being more integrated, not w work on becoming somebody who is in, who, um, also living in the world of form, also honoring the humanness, I guess I, that would say. So he learned about that. So he did, you know, so he decided, I think this was the late seventies. Um, you know, and then he would have mistakes or I don't, I don't know if this was a mistake because it's all perfect, but you know, he, had this teacher in New York, I think her name was Joya, who um, he thought she was more uh, powerful, uh, psychic and stuff, and she, it didn't turn out that way. So, um, I had another, another dog. <laughs> I'm attracting dogs today. <laughs> Who let the dog out? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so he, you know, uh, I like to call it a new devil, new level, new devil thing that he went through. He, uh, he whenever he reached a new level, he, he would, there, uh, a new devil would happen. Like this Joya person, uh, Ellen Watts telling him to face, you know, start, start honoring the humanness, um, death, uh, and then the death of his father. So that was, became very touched. So, so, and then his stroke, right? So, um, so, but he always, and he, he worked with the dead and he were, or the dying, I'm sorry. He worked with the dying, um, and, uh, just being present with them and just being there for them. Um, and that, and AIDS in the eighties, uh, patients and stuff like that. So he was very giving of his, his being to, uh, to us and also just sharing, sharing the Dharma and which, which, um, by and by, I mean, it had powerful impact on, um, powerful impact on uh, America's uh, Western spirituality okay the book be here now I mean I'm I'm sure Eckhart Tolle's the power of now I mean it, the 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 be here now is is a is a foundational book of it you know of it and his teachings um, direct directly or indirectly I mean uh, just at least that whole influence. Um, yeah, so he, so, and, you know, and then, and then, the, then he had to care for his dad and, and then, and that shifted for him too. And he grew, so he continually grew, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so 
there are certain spiritual uh, uh, teachings or, you know, circles out there where there's it kind of poo-poo on growth, right? Poo-poo on like, or at least don't really address it. It's like, okay, awaken and you're here, like the strict non-dualist. Um, but we're human, right? We don't, we don't awaken and just suddenly pop, like become a no nothing and disappear. We, we then, this is our curriculum. This, this, this incarnation becomes our curriculum to grow and heal and, um, you know, dissolve our whatever karma stuff that, that, that we have and so forth. Um, and he was an exemplar of that. Is that a, wor a good w word to use? He was a good example of that, right? He sort of, you know, preached what he, he sort of walked, walked the walk, uh, you know? Um, so that's another thing about him that, uh, I might, I admire, um, you know, and his vulnerability. I said that before. His sense of humor. He, he was a great storyteller. He could tell some great stories. Um, and uh, yeah, and then he had the stroke, and and that was another new level, new devil. I mean, he uh, he openly talks about how distraught he was at the beginning, and then he made peace with that. So um, and still continued teaching, right? So um, so yeah, so. Ram Das matters. Why Ram Das matters is because he's still very influential and um, a spiritual teacher. And he also talks about spirituality in a way that is accessible, right? And he doesn't sugarcoat too much of it at all. You know, like some spiritual teachers out there. Um, and he embraces different spiritual tra traditions like Buddhism, Hinduism, and Sufism, and Christian mysticism, ism, all these isms. And, um, and I, you know, I hope that the younger generation, uh, finds him continual, you know, some have and continues to find him as a spiritual teacher. I mean, there's a lot of young spiritual teachers out there now and that's great. And, you know, I mean, I'll, although I always suggest or think that people should wait five to 10 years or so before they start teaching. Um, but, you know, even, I mean, Ram Dass, uh, at least, I mean, maybe a couple years after after his awakening, um, but um, but yeah, but the people, even even sp younger spiritual teachers now can still learn from Ram Das. You know, I'm still learning from him. So, um, and uh, I think that's it. So, uh, Ram Das. <laughs> he, I think he could appreciate, you know, me kind of walking around trying to find a little quiet, quiet area, you know, because, because, uh, and, and just be okay with it, because it's like that's life, right? Right? <laughs> you got to go with the flow with life rather than try to try and fight it to make it, and that that's you know one of his core teaches teachings just go with the flow with life and allow it to take you and guide you to where you need to be right and be here now i love it be here now so so love thank you randas i love you and thank you for everything all your contributions to spirituality and helping me and I know you helped thousands and literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, and I know that uh, you're it's not like a big deal to you <laughs> it was just what you were supposed to do right 
and that's beautiful and that's how it should be all right so thank you for watching and love you and until we meet again yes yes you're getting shouts from the basketball team until we meet again next time in the be here now moment